Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, dear comrades, it's uh, a great privilege for me to stand today in front of you and to be able to share my analysis concerning the ICC. And uh, let me start from SAIPS, the Double Decky Foundation, for this invitation. And uh, of course, the University of South Africa for this opportunity. <coughs> Today, I would like to share with you some reflections concerning very interesting and very mysterious, let me put it in this way, international institution called the International Criminal Court, ICC. But before we start to analyze what this institution is in reality, let me draw your attention to several short facts about the ICC. Of course, all of you following the news, and you from time to time could listen to the information that ICC today convicted that and that person who had found guilty in the Committee of International Crimes. That's what usually we hear from mass media. But there are some other interesting facts that usually mass media do not put to us. Let me show you several examples. The very famous case from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, prosecuted versus Rwanda, the very first case of this court. This very first case was prepared by the prosecution five years, but the very first prosecution witness confessed right in the courtroom that he gave false testimony. Moreover, the false testimony uh, he was told by the prosecution to present before the court. The very Another very famous case, Prosecutor versus Kenyatta. Um, before the trial was scheduled to commence last November, but then it was a very strange statement of the prosecutor of the ICC. The prosecutor said, we don't have witnesses. Sorry. But the court not dismissed the case, but just said the date is located. Well, two days ago, the new date for the start of the trial announced it is October 7. But we all know from the words of the prosecutor that she doesn't have witnesses. The case against the president of Cote d'Ivoire. Laurent Gbagbo. Mr. Gbagbo in jail for almost two and a half years without confirmation of charges. Let me draw your attention. We are not talking about the trial. We are talking about the pre-trial stage. The president of the country is waiting in jail two and a half years only to confirm the charges. The charges presented by the prosecutor, in fact, were not confirmed already. But the court again acted very strangely. It says, well, the presented charges will not be confirmed. There is no case. But we give the prosecution more time to find maybe something else. The case again, uh, prosecutor versus Muammar Gaddafi. After the assassination of the accused, the court just terminates the proceedings. Let me compare with other cases when 
For example, a witness declined to respond to certain questions in court. This witness immediately brought to justice for the violation of the or for the content of the court. But the ICC think that assassination of the accused do not constitute any contempt of the court and just terminate the proceedings. The case prosecutor versus Jean-Pierre Bemba. All the defense team is arrested. It happened several weeks ago. But officially, the defense counsel of Mr. Bemba accused of attempting to <coughs> bribe witnesses. In fact, the defense team itself were about to present evidence how the prosecution bribed witnesses. I think this statement of President Museveni made at the United Nations General Assembly last year is very well known. Whether there is something right in these words, let's make a general overview of the cases that currently in the court's door. Now we have eight situations in ICC. They are enumerated. It's the Congo, Uganda, Central Africa, Sudan, Kenya, Libya, Portugal, and the final situation is Mali. Uh, we should distinguish situations and cases. We have more cases and situations because situations concerning with the certain states and cases are concerning these uh, individuals. So, for the moment we have five cases in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. I will not read them, they are on the screen. Uh, we have one case in the situation of, in Uganda. It's a prosecutor versus Kony and, uh, and allies, who are top members of the World Resistance Army. Five cases in the situation in Sudan. It's a case against the President. It's a case against the Interior Minister and uh, General Witt Leader. It's a case against the Defense Minister. And um, uh, this case against the United Resistance Front Leader, Mr. Garda, was not confirmed on the level of confirmation of charges, and this case is terminated. Uh, the final case is against Mr. Banda in Jerko. The trial will start in several days, but only against Mr. Banda, because Mr. Jerko announced to be dead. Situation in Kenya, two cases. It's very interesting, not just to announce what these cases are, but to look into how these cases will proceed, because prosecution presented initially two cases with three accused. During the confirmation of charges, uh, the court dismissed uh, each, uh, dismissed one um, charges against uh, accused in each case, so reduced uh, these two cases for two people. But finally, it happened something against very strange. Please be ready to listen to the word strange very often when we are talking about ICC. Uh, after the court confirmed, let me, let me speak slowly because it's really interesting moment. After the court confirmed the charges against Mr. Mutar, the prosecution withdraw this case. So, for the moment, the case prosecutor versus Kenyatta 
Italy uh, has only one in use, President Kenyatta himself. The situation in Central African Republic, we have one case, prosecutor versus Jean Perbemba, the former Vice President of the Czech Republic of the Congo. Three cases uh, in the situation in Libya, the case prosecutor versus Omar Gaddafi, I told you that this is a terminated case. And the case against Saif Gaddafi, the case against uh, Mr. Sims. Situation in Cote d'Ivoire, three cases. The first case is against President Laurent Barbo. Second case, prosecutor versus Simon Barbo, who is wife of the President Laurent Barbo. And the third case is a very recent one, that is a case against Minister. Charles, Charles de Goudet. Situation in Mali does not have cases. For the moment, the prosecutor is still thinking. <laughs> so, uh, after that general overview, it's very difficult not to make a conclusion that International Criminal Court targeting only African states. Whether this is uh, something that just happened or this is an intentional policy. Uh, by the way, let me draw your attention to the fact that even if we look into the uh, current investigations, which could be potential cases. It's still against Africa. It's a case that uh, it's investigations in Nigeria and investigation, investigations in Guinea. So if these cases will proceed to uh, if this investigation will proceed to cases, it will be again African states. Uh, to understand what is this ICC all about? We need to analyze several important questions about International Criminal Court. I invite only four of these questions for the today's lecture, of course, there are much more of them. But I think analysis of these four points will bring us to very interesting conclusions. First of all, let me start from the problem of universality. If we listen to mass media, mass media always claim, and ICC itself claims that this is universally recognized court. Whether it's true or not, if we look to uh, this map, map number one, uh, probably it will, uh, the answer will not be so clear, because when the academicians try to more details uh, in the certain explanations, it doesn't make it more clear. Uh, what is the problem of this map? The problem of this map is that it is distinct three groups of the countries. Uh, the great countries are not members of the ICC treaty. The green countries are countries that signed and ratified the ICC statute. And the orange uh, or yellow countries, the countries are some kind of the middle. They signed ICC statute, but not ratified. But if we make this map more clear, so to ask ourselves who is member of ICC and who are not, the situation will be quite different. Now, without calculation, we clearly see that the ICC statute, uh, or let me put it in a little bit different way, that not majority of the states are uh, members of ICC statute. So, ICC could not claim that it is universally recognized. And this is very important because ICC statute uh, contains very 
serious norms. For example, the norm that negates the immunity of the United States. So, the claim that ICC statute is universally recognized is quite a serious one because it brings us to the, other conclusions. For example, that immunity of head of states are recognized by majority. Now we see that is not true. And if we look into the... Uh, what exact countries are not members of ICC, it's also quite interesting. It's Russia, China, India, United States of America. So if we calculate in the sense of population, countries represented by population, it also could be said that not only majority of states, but states represented majority of world population are not uh, supporting the ICC statute. Another very important question for us to analyze is the situation of reference. Uh, for the moment we have two situations that were referred to the ICC. To make it uh, more clear, let me remind you that most of the cases in ICC were referred by the states themselves. Uh, but these two <coughs> situations were referred by the Security Council. And this is a very important moment for us to uh, look into the details. Because what happened during this reference? It's a very grave violation of international law. Of course, the Article 13 of the ICC Statute provides the power of the Security Council to refer situations to ICC. But one interesting question arises. If we look into the United Nations Charter, uh, we could not find the same power to the, uh, for the Security Council. That means that referring situation to ICC, Security Council, act acting outside its powers. The second problem I would like to draw your attention concerning the very referral itself. Because what does it mean referral of the situation by the Security Council to ICC? It means that a state which decided not to be a party to a certain treaty is obliged by this treaty, by the Security Council. So I ask the first question, could the state parties to force a non-state party to be obliged by international treaty? Of course the question is rhetoric because the modern international law clearly says that it is not possible. The modern international law based on the principle of voluntary participation of states and treaties. Now we see not just a certain violation, but a great violation, which violates the very base, basic of international law. The second question I put to you is uh, even uh, I wanted to say it's, uh, it's funny, but, but of course it's not uh, funny, but uh, look at the situation, what happened exactly when the Security Council member states referred the situation to Libya and in Sudan to ICC. We know that uh, there are several members of the Security Council who are not members to ICC statute. And what happened during this referral? The state parties who are not member states to uh, to the ICC statute uh, obliged Sudan and Libya by this treaty. So this is again something absolutely unacceptable, but it happened. Uh, 
Uh, I would like to draw your attention to this picture. Uh, Agashir case is not only about Sudan, and I put two flags on the African map the flag of Chad and the flag of Malawi. Probably some of you uh, remember that during the state visit of Al Bashir to Chad and Malawi, the ICC demanded that these countries uh, arrest Al Bashir. But these countries refused, so the ICC delivered a decision related to Chad and Malawi, referring these countries to the Security Council uh, for responsibility. But that was uh, something that was uh, quite obvious, that was sharply outlined in the text. But there is also a very interesting moment in this decision. This is a very historical decision of the ICC. When the court, in passing, uh, formulate the following, that head of states are no more enjoy immunity in front of any international court. Of course, formulating this, the ICC has no real power to do that, but it's still Made this. Why? I think it's quite clear if you look at the practice of international uh, criminal courts who are producing their own decisions without any reference to law. They just produce the law. And citing them themselves and uh, such a producing the international or so called international. Judicial law. So we come to a very interesting moment in our uh, analysis when the only analysis is not enough. So we see that something wrong with ICC. We, we are witnessing the situation when we clearly see that this court is acting quite strangely and it's acting sometimes unreasonable. To understand what it means, I suggest to use another very important academic method of research and synthesis.